Hey everyone, it's March 16, 2022. It's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit out. It's GeoRant time, GeoRant number 196. It's raining a little, so you might hear it. I'm on lunch and I thought I would talk about this a little bit. This will be a report that I plan on putting in our next volume of the uh, publications of the Institute. I may put it for free on ResearchGate, I don't know, but I'm still gonna show you it anyway. This is not the final copy submitted for review. That's This isn't it, this is I think, since I printed out in color, I only printed out a couple of times. I, I need the color, you'll see why when you look at the figures. So when I get to those, and this is mostly figures, this is just the cover. This is uh, on the north limb. Oh, what is the name of this place? Lower Narrows. Used to be an active quarry when I was a student, but now it's a preserve. And those ripple marks are awesome, but you can't get to them. Well, I'm sure if you're determined enough, you could get to them through this way. Uh, me and my wife have been up here a couple times. I've, I keep looking at this and she's like, don't you dare go over there because it's nothing but jagged, loose boulders to get there. You can't go up this way, not without climbing equipment. Anyway, I digress. So if you see typos and wonky wording, I apologize. That's just me. This is one I did right. And the reason why is because of some recent stuff we found out. This area, the Baraboo, many of you have heard me talk about this before. This area here is where, let me, let me get you the figure, is where modern structural geology was figured out in the 19th, early 20th century. We are down here, this little tiny area. I'll come back to what all this other stuff is here later. But the Baraboo Range, Baraboo Area, Baraboo Hills, this all is a pre-Cambrian, I'll, I'll get to why I use that instead of the actual eons in a minute, syncline. It's mostly quartzite. The Baraboo, unlike these other associated quartzites, the pinks here, this is what we call the Wolf River event. This occurred approximately 50, 40 to 50 million years after these were deposited and helped deform a lot of this stuff. And you can see this, that's Wisconsin. Here we use a mid-continent rift up through here. The figures haven't changed much, but the wording in the report might be uh, but the Baraboo is by far, it's not the most extensive, that's the Sioux, but it's by far the most complete. And as you can see, there's other Precambrian units here. Now, why do I keep saying Precambrian? Why don't I say Proterozoic? Well, it is Proterozoic. I mean, why don't I say Paleoproterozoic or Mesoproterozoic? Well, it is Proterozoic Eon. I guess I could have said that five miles out of my head today, but... It is, we used to think this thing throughout history since the 19th century, even though we figured out the structure behind how this thing came to be a syncline, we had no clue how old this thing was. And up until about the 80s, we pretty much were all over the map. Anywhere from Huronian, which is about two and a half billion years ago, all the way up to Cretaceous. I mean, it was, I get into that in here. It was all over the map. Now, we've pulled the trital zircons since then, but not from the whole area, not from, I mean, from Baraboo, but only select parts. And then a little bit, uh, never really from the Sioux or the Flambeau or the Barren or Thunder Mountain. Uh, the Sioux has had them pulled before, but very locally, nothing on the extent that we did. Uh, back a couple years ago and the paper was published in 2022. And we got, what we got was some interesting numbers, which I'll get into in a minute. And here you can see, I, I use the term interval. Just so you know, the only reason why I use the term interval, which was coined, I believe in the early eighties, it's in my references, was that this is pre-stratigraphic code, pre-international stratigraphic guide, pre-all that. Not by much, but still. There is no such thing as an interval. It's not a recognized thing, even though we've been using it to 
to apply to this. Because it doesn't just apply to the Baraboo, it applies to the Sioux and the Flambeau and all those other ones that we, around the 80s, started to realize they were all about the same age. So lithostratigraphically, they were very similar, and chronostratigraphically, they were very similar. So they called all this the Baraboo Interval. It is more appropriately should be called a sequence. That That is more, it's essentially what it is. This isn't in it. It's this stuff. This is the rock it sits upon. And there were a lot of mysteries until recently, even about that. So in about the 80s, most of the consensus was this thing was Paleoproterozoic. You know, 1.7 to 1.6 billion with a B years ago, plus or minus, you know, some might have been a little more precise in their numbers, some a little less, but around there, some even thought it was, some even still thought it was Pinocchian 1.85 billion years ago, but it's clearly not that. We now have a, enough understanding. Let me go back to the map for a second here. What you see here is you see all these quartzites with their names, the Wolf River, Baraboo, and you see these black lines of these provinces. Okay, this is the Superior Craton. Most of these are on the Superior Craton. Actually, that's not true, sorry. Most are not on the Superior Craton. The Sioux is, but you see most of these, this is the Pinocchian here. We have the Marshfield terrain over here, which doesn't have any. Then we have the, what is it? The, the Yapavai province, which is huge. It goes all the way to south, Southwestern uh, US. So does the Matzal. Same thing, all the way there. These were big accretions. And these, and the Matzal is about 1.5 to 1.6 billion years old. So these quartzites were thought to be older than that. And the zircons they had at the time kind of suggested that. However, uh, me and others pulled samples from the field to have the zircons analyzed. Now in here too, I give, oh, we'll, we'll come back to that later. I give a summary in here. I mean, the paper is listed in here. It even tells you where to go if you want, okay? We got some pretty young zircons. Now remember, you can't be older than your youngest zircon, okay? You can be younger, not older. So these, these are maximum ages. Now, there is one in the Sioux that was anonymously, you know what I mean, young? <laughs> not anonymous, not anonymous. And now, is it? I don't know. Anyway, only one that gave us a really young age. It's still Precambrian, but it came out as this, and I reported it just to keep it there because it's in the paper. But you look at this and you see all these other, these are the youngest zircons. So everything else has to be younger than that. And we'll come back to why I did this. But this here, okay? These quartzites, all the others, except that weird outlier, that young age, had more than one around this age. I just picked the youngest of the ones around those age. So our stuff has to be younger than that. So we do have the Baraboo. The youngest was uh, 1,691 million years ago. And most of them, 1,712. You know, the Baraboo actually had the youngest other than the Thunder Mountain which is closer to, I don't have it. Oh yeah, I do, the, the McCaslin. The two are kind of, we thought they were directly like linked, but they seem to have two source areas now. I mean, still the same lithostratigraphic and chronostratigraphic deposit. However, the Thunder Mountain is 1,594 million years old. So that means at least the Thunder Mountain and likely the McCaslin have to be younger than that. Or the McCaslin could be, you know, around that age. It could be a little older, but because the youngest zircon on that's 1,712. But if it is diagenically or lithostratigraphically correlative, we still have to entertain that idea. So what I did was I did all the other deposition rough ages based off these detrital zircons. And that's how I produced that column. And you can see... We have years here, and what you see here is we cross the Paleoproterozoic, Mesoproterozoic line. So, oh, the date quartzite too, I believe that had an anomalously young age too. Anyway, um, oh, we didn't actually sample the date, I think others have. So the Thunder Mountain could easily be up in here, and that's fine. See, it's still 
chronostratigraphically within this interval, which should more probably be called the sequence. Now, there is some speculation here, uh, estimated time spans. Now, those ages are based off the zircon, so they're pretty much gonna be hard to argue. I might be off a few million years here and there, but these are the ages I picked for estimated deposition depositional rates. I could be off on those. It's just based off the uh, detritals and the bracketed baraboo. Now the baraboo is immense. I think it's over, it's really thick at its thickest. Uh, you know, I don't go, I don't, I fail to remember. It's at least two kilometers thick at its thickest. I know that. It, I think it might even be more like four. God, I don't know. Or this whole thing is four or something like that. Anyway, now, what we see here is that this stuff doesn't have any fossils. There's no fossils in this stuff. Even in the slightly dolostone part up here, there's, there's no fossils. Now, what we do have is we have this thick purple maroon quartzite. That's what all these look like. They essentially look like this. Now, the order of the rocks, the, the lithologies might change. Like, like here, this is Baraboo Stewart and Stewart broke out four informal members. They didn't formalize anything, and I'm not going to do it. They could do it if they want. But all these lithologies will tend to be present at the other locations. They just may not be in this order. So that indicates something to us. Now we know these are chronostratigraphically and lithostratigraphically equivalent, at least in the most part. So we look at these deposits, and the fact that this is, you know, over here you know, covering vast parts of the Midwest. I am so messed up right now. You know, these purple, maroon, you know, whatever you want to call them, quartzites, I don't care. Although maroon's not a legitimate color. You know, they're pretty far spread, but they may have been a lot further spread than this. Like, we're talking north, well into the Superior Crate time. Well into it. These may have covered... And then these may have extended past the most northern one, which I think is, uh, what is that? Is that the, the Caslin? That's the furthest north one? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Close enough. We're talking 2,000, 3,000 kilometers to the north. This could have been extended to. How do we know that? Well, the detrital zircons. We have really old detrital zircons in here. Not always. The Baraboo actually has the least amount of them, probably because it was the furthest and the closest to an uh, epicontinental sea. But generally you see these really old, old dates. There's nothing local in the area to source that. Anywhere around any of these quartzites, with maybe the exception of the water's meat uh, cut, waters meet dome, wherever it's, it's about right here where my nail is. But look at where all these quartzites are. Look at where the sources come from. There's no direct evidence of being sourced from here. Some of them could have been though, because, you know, we have to go by the detrital zircons. Um, that's why I put this arrow here, but here's the thing that isn't very topographically high and it wasn't then either so this would have been covered quickly the dome is nowhere near as exposed ever as these things are thick and i think some of these zircons are actually older than the dome so they had to come from somewhere else now we thought that maybe scandinavia might have been connected here at the time at one point but it wasn't so that can't source them, and the zircons aren't right anyway. If it was, there's only one other place they could have been derived from, the Northwest Territories, the Slave Craton. That's really the only other place they could have been derived from. So this was much more extent, which gets us extensive. Now, the Sauk sequence in the Cambrian shows a relatively rapid transgression, geologically speaking, 10, maybe 20 million years. But those deposits are nowhere near as thick of the, as these. And based off the zircons and the bracketing of other ages, this thing, the Baraboo, at least that Baraboo, can't be much bracketed outside of this. 
You know, I mean, there is some leeway, but basically from about 1.645 billion years ago to 1.555 billion years ago, all of this stuff had to be deposited. And it's kilometers thick, massive kilometers thick. So parts of the sock sequence are thicker than this, but generally they aren't. And um, when I say sock sequence, I'm talking about, it's actually been divided. <laughs> I'm talking about the basal sock one sequence. That's the one that seems to have been rapidly transgressed. And so we're talking not even 100 million years here for all of this. And the other ones are suspected to be the same. So that's a long period of tectonic stability. Now, some of these do have intrusions. Baraboo does not that we are aware of. And those have been dated around Wolf River events, around 1.45 billion years ago. So um, so we don't have too much leeway to work with here. We don't, we don't even really have another billion years because the Wolf River, some of it's older than even that. So that's a pretty good time frame, I think, right in there. And all these sediments, like I said, the lithologically they're similar, but they're not always in this order. That indicates to us that at least the quartzite parts were deposited in a high energy alternating environment, like a fluvial stream environment or a near shore environment and rarely a marine environment. Environment It would have been near shore marine. Uh, I don't think any dunes or beach deposits have been recognized in this. Uh, other, not, not, not in the Baraboo. The surrounding Cambrian rocks they have, but not, not in the Baraboo. So 500 million years ago, we had this quick sock sequence coming from the south, deposit Cambrian deposits. The Baraboo Hills stood as islands then. But a billion years before that, we had a similar situation. We had a vast stable craton and the seas came in quickly and they would have had to come in from the Northwest at that point, modern Northwest. We're not sure the continental arrangement then. This would have been around Nuna or Columbia. So I don't wanna ramble on too much more about this, but I'll show you my references. For such a short paper with mostly charts, I have 22 of them. Let me put it this way. If you really want to look at them, go ahead. Here, I'll even slow scroll for you. But anyway, if you, um, I think this is going to be the last one I post for a little while. I've got a lot on my plate. Anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I hope you learned something. If I do put this on ResearchGate, I'll let you know.